We're just going to play an ancient Chinese song called Tuning. <laughs> I'm going to take the throne while they're playing that ancient Chinese song. Uh, just for a couple things that I forgot to say. I guess it's a senior moment. Retirement has done that to me. I didn't write everything down. And so I've forgotten a couple things. The first, first of those things is to thank some other helpers, Mackenzie, Rhonda, and Shirley, for running the wheelchairs for us today. And And also, we have uh, three co-sponsors of this concert this afternoon. And that's Pinnacle Bank, Estelle and Mike Mills, and Leonard and Renee Knack. So if you give them a hand, they will be quite And I haven't heard Larry say this yet, so I decided I was going to. He might be mad at me, but I'm going to do it anyway. This is his retirement season, and almost just their last three left. Okay, so you'll have to talk to him to see where those three are. And But I want to tell you this, you can't retire from music. It just isn't possible. You find another way to use your talents and another group to play or sing for. So let's give him a hand. He can't retire. Yeah. You know, it's, it's okay because everybody gets old and dies, and it would just be so awkward to do that on stage. <laughs> so that's, that's why. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. In 1979, there was another movie that came out called The Electric Horseman. Do you remember that one? Oh, yeah. It won Best Movie of the Year, and it starred Robert Redford and Jane Fonda. It was about a cowboy kind of disillusioned with the whole thing. And Willie Nelson, oh, by the way, did you hear that Willie Nelson died? Yeah, it was just on the, on the phone system thing. And, Turns out he got stoned and was playing on the road again. <laughs> so he wrote this theme song for that movie. And it was really, really slow and it was a waltz. It was beautiful. But because I have a banjo, I can't play slow. So I just play it three times faster. But it's the same song. Ready? One, two, three. Well, I grew up in Lincoln, every and a cowboy, and loving cowboy ways. Pursuing a life of my own heroes, burned out my childhood days. Burned all the moves of a modern day drifter, that I hold on to death too long. Just take what you need from these things that draw me, and the words from Sacred Dreams. Song. My heroes are 
ask me why I changed the songs? <laughs> well, the truth of it is, I just can't do them the real way that they did them. And so I just sit down and first I learn how to sing the song, and I sing it, and then I just pick up the banjo and make up music to go along with it. So it's nothing I really do on purpose, they just end up a lot different, because I can't do it the real way. So. <laughs> They're better. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you. So here's a switch. It's time for some rock and roll. But you never heard this on the banjo. This is by the Doobie Brothers. <laughs> well, I ain't got no worries. And I ain't in no hurry. And I and said, what are you doing? I said, well, my marriage counselor told me if I wanted my wife to like me better, I needed to do something sexy to attract her. <laughs> oh, God. There's some moaning going on. Moaning. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> There's a song about what it's like to be in a band. It's fast. step in and play bass with us. And if she'd have known then what she knew now, she never would have done it. But she is a trooper. She had to learn 70 songs in just a few weeks, and that's pretty overwhelming. She had to learn bass and the vocal parts. I didn't know anything. What? I didn't know anything. <laughs> And so she really stepped up and did it. And when I was interviewing her, I said, now I'm really into the stage presence thing, so I need you to look really hot on stage. And so she wears snow boots. <laughs> <laughs> Would you please, well, she's going to do a song. Would you please welcome Miss Peggy Douglas.
Now, you're wondering, at this point, why isn't she the lead singer? <laughs> and I kind of agree, but, you know, I got this list of songs that I've been working on my pretty much whole life, and I, you know, they don't want to sing these songs. <laughs> they want to sing their songs. And I'm too picky and say, no, you're going to sing these songs. So that's why they don't sing very much, because they don't want to sing my songs. So I do. But she's a really good singer, isn't she? And thank you very much to the sound people. They make it all, all the sound better. So yeah. thanks. Y'all did, did we get the guitar issue fixed? Can you hear it now? Yes. Okay. You should have said something sooner. We didn't know. We can hear it in our speakers. We didn't know we weren't getting much guitar. Okay, so here's one dumb, dorky thing I did my first year of teaching. <laughs> the shop was really little. Just no space. We had no storeroom. So I had to store 70 woodshop projects in the same space that we were working, and all the machines were, and the tables were, so it was a mess all the time. There was china cabinets and gun cabinets and desks and tables and clocks all stacked in the same room we were trying to work in. So it was stressful and I hated it. And we had this hand wash station that was one of those big half circle things that kids, a whole bunch of kids could wash at the same time. Well, it didn't work. So it was just taking up this big space. I could have put a gun cabinet there or something. So I put in my requisition to have it taken out. Nothing happened. Next year, put it in again, nothing happened. One day I must have had an extremely bad day because I got so mad, I went over and I just started ripping it away from the wall with my hands and I tore it away from the wall and said, I'll get rid of this. Well, that was a bad choice. The water line was still hooked up to it. <laughs> and so a half inch water pipe started shooting like 10 feet in the air and coming down right on top of the table saw, which was plugged in. So there I stood. So I did what any boy scout would do. I ran over and stuck my finger in the pipe. There. Now what? <laughs> but, okay. What am I going to do now? And everybody was gone. It was after school, so there was nobody around. Well, luckily, the office was right next door to my woodshop, so it was just around the corner. And I knew the secretaries were probably still in there. So I thought, okay. I'll run in there and yell for help, then I'll come back. So I ran in there, I, I stuck my head in the door, and I yelled, I just broke a water pipe out of my ribbon, it's spraying 10 feet in there, it's coming down on the table, so I would just still plug in, and I need some help right now. And I ran back in the back room, and I put my finger back in there. <laughs> so several gallons of water went right on the table saw the whole time I was gone. And so there I sat, waiting for somebody to come help. And it was like 10 minutes, and I thought, do I have to go do that again? <laughs> and finally, one of the secretaries poked her head in and said, what? <laughs> because they didn't really get what I was saying, and they thought I was kidding or something. So I, I pulled my finger out, and the water sprayed over there, and she said, oh my. And I put it back in. So anticlimactically, I was saved, and she got somebody to turn the water off. But that sure was a stupid thing to do, wasn't it? <laughs> here's, a John, here's a John Denver song. I'm gonna 
Search. So Katie's going to play one of the prettiest songs you've ever heard on the violin, and you tell me the story. You probably would know it from the Civil War series by Ken Burns, um, but it's actually a two written in the 80s by Jay Unger. He had a fiddle camp in Ashokan Valley, New York, and after everybody left, he was feeling melancholy and wrote Ashokan Farewell in the style of an Irish air. Um, and Ken Burns heard it and said that belongs in the Civil War, and he put it in his documentary. This is my grandpa's favorite song.
things I've ever heard. And it was so relieving and nice not to have a banjo in it. <laughs> so another new th thing that happened when I was a brand new teacher, I was 22 when they hired me here, and some of my students were like 19. So the first week they asked me if I'd buy beer and party with them. <laughs> and so I got to know some of the basketball players and I said, hey you guys, you want to come early before school and let's play basketball? And they said, yeah, let's do that. So one morning we all came in like at six o'clock and we were playing full court, just going hard. And the middle school principal came in and kicked us all out of the gym. And I said, wait, I have a key, I, I teach here, I'm a, I'm a teacher here. And he said, you're not old enough to supervise these kids, now get out of here. <laughs> so we all left. Well, when my principal, the high school principal, found out that the middle school principal had kicked me out of the gym, boy, was there some yelling and screaming going on in their office about kicking his teachers out of the gym. <laughs> and I was just naive and dumb, and I didn't say anything. Like, well, okay, I'll go. <laughs> I said, but I have a key. <laughs> Here's a song by the Oak Ridge Boys. With eyes that look like heaven And it looks like cherry wine Well that girl she showing up Makes my little light shine Yes it does And I get a funny feeling All up and down my spine Cause I know that my love I rest mine Love I love some memories. 
I remember when that song came out and the whole nation liked it so much they played it like every 10 minutes and pretty soon we all hated it. <laughs> I wish they'd stop playing that. <laughs> it was popular. So it's finally time to introduce this guy. We met, my manager introduced us and said, hey, there's this guy that plays the mandolin and you ought to get to know him. And we met, played a tune. I have to say, he is a gem. He is so easy to play music with. All my crazy ideas, no matter what I want to do, he says, okay, let's give it a try. <laughs> he's so easy going and he's willing to do anything I do. Anything I want to try, he says, yeah, let's try that. So, uh, yeah, I just... Just love him. <laughs> From Black Hawk, South Dakota, would you welcome Dusty Whiteside? <laughs> Larry said he was going to give me a minute, and I figured I'd take full advantage. <laughs> and, uh, you've just heard that our fearless leader is going to retire this year, and probably nobody's going to miss him as much as I will because I love playing music with him. But I want all of y'all to let him know how much we're gonna miss Mr. Larry Retzel. If you all need to get his phone number, we'll take turns every day calling him. You need to play your banjo. Where's the band? We wanna hear you. <laughs> Make you feel bad. <laughs> I still don't have a cell phone because I'm still shopping around. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to perfect him before I jump right in and get one. And I live way out in the woods. So. Oh, I was going to say, poor Robin's phone, we, is, she's the one that's in on all our band texts. So everything that we need to talk to him about goes through her. So. <laughs> Thank you, Robin. Well, she has to come and tell me, there's what they said, here's what they said. So, Dusty, you're going to do a song. What is it? Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Right. One, two, three.
very nice. Very nice. Oh, those critics. As soon as they got a hold of the fact that I didn't know how to play the banjo right, and that I didn't know what I was doing with, when it came to music, they had a heyday, because that's what critics do, is they find fault to convince us all that you're lousy. And so it can't help but looking at some of the things they say and write, it's like, ugh. One of them wrote, Wetzel's banjo playing is like plucking a barbed wire fence with a claw hammer. <laughs> Don't be laughing. <laughs> and another one wrote, I could sound better if I threw a handful of silverware down the basement stairs. No. Oh. And even another one wrote, if I had a choice between listening to him play the banjo and getting a root canal, the root canal would be less painful. Oh. But I have wide shoulders, and I can take it. The thing that upsets me the most is that my own band members would say that. <laughs> so here's a song made famous by Dolly Parton and Kenny Rogers. You'll recognize this one, you can sing along. Baby, when I met you, there was peace unknown. I set out to get you with a friend. Come on, I was soft inside. There was something going on. Something to me that I can't explain Hold me closer and I feel no pain Every beat of my heart We got something going on Well, tender love is blind It requires a dedication All this love and these no conversation And we ride together uh -huh. From one lover to another
Still trying to find everybody's favorite song, so how about a Hank Williams song? Yeah. I don't that. I don't remember what keys it is. Okay. Now I gotta pick on the banjo. Okay. You can't be the only one to tell banjo jokes. I'm not. So, banjo players spend half their time tuning, and the other half playing out of tune. <laughs> So which would you prefer? <laughs> One or the other? Watch out for so that you guys don't turn into banjo players and be shunned by society. Watch out for these things. One, you might be in the presence or near a banjo player, so watch out. If you're staying at a motel that's owned by a banjo player, if you call the front desk and say, I got a leak in my sink, and he says, Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> You might be becoming a banjo player if you have friends over and you use your ironing board for the buffet table. <laughs> and you might be becoming a banjo player if the biggest city you've ever been in is Walmart. <laughs> this next song was written by Roy Orbison, but it was made into a super mega hit by Linda Ronstadt. Oh, and 
out for so you can avoid becoming a banjo player. You're outside admiring your house and you suddenly realize it needs new tires. <laughs> You're wondering why gas station bathrooms are so clean. How do they keep them so clean? You see, that means that your bathroom is a lot messier. I was hoping you guys would be a lot sharper on these. <laughs> you may be becoming a banjo player if one of your children was born on a pool table. <laughs> and the last one, you may be becoming a banjo player. <laughs> 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 Who did that? <laughs> Give it. <laughs> I hate it when the audience is funnier than I am. Okay, the last one is, you may be becoming a banjo player if you missed your sixth grade graduation because you had jury duty. <laughs> so here's a song by Zach Brown Band. I think this was the country music song of the year, the year it came out. It's real patriotic. Well,
Well, that time went so fast, but we're down to our last song. So we got to thank Sally for running the sound. Thank you, Jan Ellis, for setting this whole thing up and being so accommodating and nice to us. And thank you to Robin and Brandy for decorating the stage for us. And those contributors that made this concert possible. But most of all, thank you guys for coming to see us. Ugh. I was fine until I said, thank you guys for coming to see us. And then this big lump came out. <laughs> so this is a song that Katie just learned like this morning, so it might be kind of rough and shaky, but we'll see how it goes. Thanks for coming. See y'all on the coming. Coming down the railroad track. Lord, Lord, see on the coming, coming down that railroad track. It's the orange blossom special, bringing my baby back.
more. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. This has been so much fun. Like I said, this is kind of the culmination of my musical career. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for being so nice. Here's Alabama. No, who just did that? Oh, you get down the fiddle and you go down the bow. You take off your shoes and you put on the floor. Then you take the picture of the morning light. It's a lazy on a Saturday night. Fifteen kids in the front porch, lying as a loser.